and welcome out to Liberty Benton High School for a great game on WOSN Sports. Good evening, everybody. Chris Malenga alongside Jerry Snodgrass. Jerry, these two games teams are amazing teams, and they're just, it's going to be a great game tonight. You know, uh, amazing, amazing teams. But, but I'm also so respectful of both of them scheduling this game in the first place. You know, Liberty Benton coming from typically playing, you know, in the Blanchard Valley Conference, but, you know, and Defiance knowing that Liberty Benton has such a good history that they're both taking that opportunity to play good teams, and they are both good. Absolutely. Defiance actually leads the overall series 3-0, which I was really surprised at. Defiance beat them by 10 last year. Uh, Defiance won on an 8-2 run to end the first period, and then LB just scored 25 points the rest of the game. Wow. And so Defiance defense really locked down. Braden Shaw and Caden Zachrich had 15 points each in that game last year. Uh, Doolittle had eight points for Liberty Benton, and they were 10 of 22 from the foul line, which really didn't help them at all. Right, and, and you know, too, well, you know, Zach Rich and Shaw haven't slowed down either. It's you true. know, in fact, they haven't doubled those scores, but they've definitely increased that average, you know, per game, uh, you know, they've done. I'm really impressed, though, with some of the uh, Liberty Benton players. They have a very cohesive, uh, they, they blend so well together right combination of football players and i say that from the standpoint not because of the ruggedness but because of quarterbacking a team yep. leading a team um so it really again all of that blends to a very very good game i got to watch some of their highlights on sports report last night and they they just like a good they look like a good team our pregame tonight being sponsored by the state state bank invested in northwest and west central ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners Jerry, let's take a look at these two teams. Liberty Benton uh, is uh, coached by Doug Whiteman. He's his first year, and he came from Toledo St. John's. New look, new coach here. Yeah, and you know, I really commented to one of their administrators about that, and I don't mean this when I say it. I don't mean it derogatory, but I think sometimes when you're hiring a new coach, you you know, we see so many coaches come up through the system, mm -hmm. and, and that, that when the situation's right, that's good. I, obviously, it's worked very well for Brent for Coach Lehman. Absolutely. And I think it was the, obviously it was the right move. But in Liberty Benton's case, I don't think they had anybody internally that was really interested, but they really kind of broadened their scope mm -hmm. and brought in a coach, has great experience from Toledo St. John's High School, worked under a great coach there. And I think that just brings a, a new element to them. Obviously it does when you come in your first year and changes are bound to occur, but you're unbeaten. Yep. Coach Whiteman sat his team down at the end of June when he got hired, and he said, our goal here is going to Columbus every year. And I think he's – I was reading an article, and I think it kind of shocked his players that he expected that. But here they are. They are 16-1. Uh, and one. They're 6-0 and oh in the league. They're averaging 57 points a game, allowing just 36 points a game. They're shooting 49% from the field, 37 from three, 66 from the line. Opponents are shooting 34% against them. They're out-rebounding the teams, and they also force more turnovers than they commit. So they're a, they're a good team, a solid team, a well-coached team. And, you know, you look at that 36 points a game that they're giving up. That's phenomenal. when you And it's not at the expense of their offense. You know, a lot of times, you know, you'll see teams giving up in the low 40s, things like that. But you look at their offensive average, and barring a few games, you know, they're not much more than that. You know, they're in the 50s. But this team does that well, and uh, – that's one of the things I, I, when I was watching them on tape, you know, so much of that is just very good, solid ball hawking defense. It is. Let's take a look at our keys of the game for Liberty Benton, and then we're going to take a break and come back and look at Defiance. Uh, you know, when you look at the keys to the game uh, for Liberty Benton, there's two players on the Defiance side that they really want to watch out for. Uh, <laughs> number two and number 33. So that'd be Braden Shaw and Caden Zachrich. And they really want to uh, make sure that those uh, guys are stopped. Yeah, easier said than done, too, <laughs> isn't it? You know, and, and I, you know, sometimes, though, you've got to stop him. But I, I think realistically, he is saying to them, you're not going to you're not going to stop. Them. You're going to control and contain them. And that's not just in scoring. That's also in how they penetrate, dish the ball, so on and so forth. The other thing they want to do is they want to handle pressure and have great ball movement. And they also want to win the glass. Uh, keys to the game as identified by Liberty Benton's coach. And I think winning the glass, you see that almost by every team. And it's more than just getting that defensive rebound. It's understanding offensive rebounding. 
And, you know, so, again, it, it's more than just getting that defensive rebound. All right, our key is being presented by the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll meet the Defiance Bulldogs and look at their keys to the game. Back after this on WOSN. Back out at the Eagles' nest here at Liberty Benton. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass here on WOSN. Well, we met the Liberty Benton Eagles. Let's meet the, Bull the Defiance Bulldogs, a team you're quite familiar with. They're sitting at 14-1, uh, 5-0 at, uh, in the league, coached by Bryn Lehman, longtime uh, player under Kirk Lehman and longtime assistant coach. And kind of as you talked to Liberty Benton, went the other direction. Defiance went within the coaching tree. And I'm sure glad they did. You know, I'm giving my age a little bit, but it's so good. You know, starting my career at Defiance, and I still know so many people and still owe so many people money there. Um, <laughs> it was so good to run into so many of them, but one of them, Kirk. Kirk played in my first year when I was at Defiance. And, you know, obviously it is that family, they just live and breathe everything that Defiance basketball should be. So it was a great move hiring Bryn from within. Well, Bryn uh, is uh, th in his third year, 44-13. and 13. They were 15-6 and six last year, 7-2 and two in the WBL. They have eight returning letter winners, averaging 59.6 points per game, allowing 42.7 points per game. They're shooting 46% from the field, 32% from three, 69% from line, and the opponents are only shooting 37% against them. They out-rebound teams 28 to 23 and force 12 turnovers a game while turning the ball over eight times. The Defiance team is a good team. Yes, they are. And, you know, that turnover to – that turnover ratio, you know, possession to turnover is so key for them. They have good ball pressure on the perimeter, play a lot of players. Got a couple guys that, you know, could be starting. One that started last year that is on the, you know, coming in as the sixth man this year. So they've got a lot of depth. They absolutely do. So let's take a look at our keys to the game for Defiance. Keys presented by the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Yep, you know, first of all, Defiance is so good on the perimeter with good ball pressure, and that's what they want to do and force turnovers. And again, that creates more offensive opportunities, obviously. Secondly, they need to get them to the three-point line, and that's something that, you know, I think they can pressure Liberty Benton and, and, and force them out away from it and, and do a very good job defensively that way. And, and also, I should say this, more so, they themselves get on top of Liberty Benton by hitting threes. Yep. They have a lot of potential, obviously, to do that. And they need to go right away, right away and attack and go at them offensively. And that's something I think Bryn has done with his teams all year long. Absolutely. Well, the last game, let's take a the last game for the two teams. Liberty Benton defeated North Baltimore 73-25. North Baltimore in their league. Carson Conaway scored 21 points. Case and Doolittle scored 17. Cam Garlock added 9. And that improved Liberty Benton's record to 16-1, and 7-0 and in the BBC. And, you know, North Baltimore, when you look at that score, pretty lopsided. But Liberty Benton's really the class of this league. Well, it is. And, I, you know, that is part of the reason why. And I know there's a lot of talk one way or the other on that. But... I think they did the right thing by pulling out of the BVC in the coming years. I think it's in two years, but it's the right thing to do. This community has grown so much. They're playing much better talent, and I give them a ton of credit for doing that. And it's really tough to go independent or find another league that will take you. But Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. When you look at the Bulldogs, Defiance has won 12 in a row. And they put up their most points this season in an eight years, Jerry, with an 80-45 to 45 shelling of Elida. They hit 15 threes, and it's their highest scoring output since 80-31 to 31 over Fairview back in 2015. Wow, wow. <laughs> That's an amazing statistic when you think about it. The 12 in a row is, is a very – and one of the assistant coaches on the bench, um, I think it, Jacob Moore, one of the assistant coaches, played on the last team that had the winning streak as long as this one is. So – um, yeah, that's a phenomenal statistic. Braden Shaw had 22 points in the uh, the game. Caden Zackridge 23, and uh, boy, that's a that's a good uh, team there as well. Yep, and it's you know one of the and I don't think this means anything one way or the other. But Defiance's game last night got canceled, you know, because of the weather. And I don't think that matters one way or the other. People might write, read more into that than there is. Absolutely. Other than other than you're hungry to get out there on the court and play. That's absolutely true. So. Maybe a little rust, but I don't think either of these teams are going to have any rust. No, and I don't think, you know, people make something of that. These are young kids. You know, they can play every night of the week, and they play hard. So that's not a big deal. 
All right, our pregame being presented by the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled, objective, and caring financial planners. Going to take this time out, come back with the opening tip after this on WOSN. Back out here at Liberty Benton, you got the gigantic flag covering from BGSU. They were real worried it was going to cover the, not going to cover the court enough, well, or too much. You know, too, and I say this, and I know it might sound like I'm bragging, and I'm not. We started a few years ago the Military Appreciation Night, and I'm so proud of what they've done. And it just, it, I'm so proud of what they're doing here tonight. I come out from uh, Bryan, Ohio, and we had that exact That's same flag on our football field and then a jet flyover afterwards for Military Appreciation Night during football. So uh, good to have everybody. Got the booth out in the lobby there where you could talk to the Army guys. And, and I should say this, too, that uh, Liberty Benton, uh, they gave all uh, veterans and uh, first responders free admission to the game tonight. There you go. And I've talked to many of them that are here. Our pregame being sponsored by State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled, objective, and caring financial planners. Let's meet our team. First for Defiance, a 6'1 senior, number two, Braden Shaw, who's averaging 18.9 points per game. A 6'1 senior, number three, Aiden Kiesling, he's averaging 2.3 points per game. A 6'1 senior, number five, David Jimenez, averaging 3.4 points per game. A 6'1 senior, number 10, Isaac Schlotter. He's averaging 6.9 points per game. And the 6'6 sophomore, number 33, Caden Zachrich, averaging 19 points per game. That's your starting lineup for Coach Bryn Lehman's Defiance Bulldogs. Now taking a look at the Liberty Benton Eagles. They're 16 and one coached by Doug Whiteman. And they are starting a 5'10 senior, number two, Cameron Garlock, averaging 5.9 points per game. A 6'5 junior, number five, Carson Conaway, averaging 13.5 points per game. A 6'3 senior, number 10, Kaysen Doolittle, averaging 15 a game. A 5'9 senior, number 14, Lincoln Garlock, averaging 10 points a game. And a 6'2 junior, number 20, Reed Thomas, averaging 4.5 points per game. Again, Liberty Benton coached by Doug Whiteman in his first season. And there is a great crowd here at Liberty Benton, a great atmosphere. And, uh, you know, you have had some history with Defiance. You've had some history here. You live near Liberty Benton. So this is kind of like a homecoming for you. It is very much so, you know. And I came out to the girls game this afternoon, which you were here as well. And, you know, great crowd for that. And this is this is really, I've noticed so many people that have come from area communities that are here to watch this game. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. So we're getting ready to tip this one away here on WOSN. And, uh, boy, it's going to be an exciting basketball game. And, uh, you know, Defiance is on a 12-game win streak. Liberty Benton 16-1. and And, you know, these two teams, uh, they respect each other, and we're going to have a heck of a game. Yeah, we sure are. You know, the three officials tonight, you know, Bruce Bain, Blake Alexander, Greg Lee, all veteran officials that – they need it on this game and yeah. they've always been able to get good officials in the BBC. All right. So we've got our State Bank pregame being sponsored by the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio skilled, objective and caring financial planners. About ready to tip this one away. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass with you here from LB. The eagle's nest, they call it. And yes, we are up in do. the nest. We are up high. We are high atop. Well, you know, you too, you talk about this school, this district, how much it has grown over the years. And when you start looking at the scoreboard, they have a, a record board that flashes through. And you start seeing the names on there, both boys and girls. Whoa. They yep. have a very, very solid, strong history here. And when you look at just the banners on the side, yes. even the champions and the runners up and things like that, LB got the tip and... Coming in and putting up a shot and missing is Cameron Garlock. Rebound comes down to LB, and we're going to get a foul on the floor. I think they're going to get Isaac Schlotter with a the foul. They do. And so. Well, you know, too, our, our viewer, our Defiance viewers might recognize the Garlock name because Scott, one of the assistant athletic directors here, co-athletic directors, his two boys are starting and uh, coached at Defiance, uh, along with Jerry Beauty, coaching the football program for, I think, six or seven years. I did hear that earlier today. Coming the other way, David Jimenez will put it up, and we're going to get a foul called on LB. Six or seven years. I did hear that earlier well, today. Well, we've seen two fouls called Coming already. the other way, think, David you know, Jimenez will put it up. That's typical game like this. You're going to see in two good teams, officials will get control of it early. 
Early on here, no score on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Underneath, quick backdoor cut and up and good for Isaac Schlotter. Defiance takes the early two-zip lead. And I think that pressure, you know, may take a lot, the pressure Defiance gives on the perimeter may take a lot of things that Liberty Benton has experienced away from them. And I say that and no, it doesn't. <laughs> three ball for Lincoln Garlock, the 5'9 senior, makes it three to two. Oh, well, Lincoln has been a good three-point shooter all along. And that'll be tipped out of bounds. And then you watch the replay. We got a replay of the shot here as Garlock just got wide open, put it up, and yep, there you go. In, in, the, in the replays or the video that I have watched in their previous games, the majority of his threes have come from that deep wing, almost corner, and usually on that left side. Our replays tonight being sponsored by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring, visiting jobs. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Defiance moving around, now they'll go baseline, put up a shot, and that is good. He is hard Shaw. to stop, he is so hard to stop. And they just got that open baseline cut, and now we're gonna get a foul going this way. And that is going to, I think that's going to be on Keys. Nope. No, it was Keesling. Well, I'm sure you know it too, but when you look at some of these players out here, I look at, you know, multi-sport athletes too, and how many of those guys are great baseball players. Yep. Shaw, of course, going to University of Akron. Keesling is one of the top pitchers around. Stolen away by the Bulldogs. Let's see if they get it the other way. Braden Shaw got his... Pocket pick there as he went through. And up Carson Doolittle is coming up a little bit gimpy. Yeah, 6'3 senior. They can ill afford to lose him. I think he's just going to try to walk it off. Somewhere along the line, I'm sure we'll see it, but uh, number five for Liberty Benton, Carson Conaway. Uh, boy, I just, he has such tremendous timing on blocking shots. He leads the BBC in block shots, and that's an art. You don't see that that much anymore. He's very quick on his feet and very good timing. Absolutely, they come through and Caden Zacherich blocks a shot on his own. Three ball in the air, no good. That was for Carson Conaway, who just got done mentioning. And the Bulldogs will come the other way, leading 4-3. Three. three ball for Defiance, rattles in and out. Rebound gets knocked out of bounds. They're gonna say it stays right here. They're gonna say that was off of Seth Elkert, who checked into the game for the Eagles. Well, and there's where, you know, rebounding being such a key tonight, but not only just knowing where that ball is going to come off and getting your hand on it. Bulldogs with a long inbound. I don't think that that's what they intended to do as, as Jimenez had to cut, hustle back to grab it, but they'll reset to Zacherich. He'll dribble a couple of times, lose the basketball, find Jimenez. Jimenez will go left side, now feed it back in. Shot up and no good for Zacherich, and LB will go the other way. Well, you see Case and Doolittle there taking the ball off the glass. Did such a good job then bringing the ball up the floor, too. Conaway nearly had the rebound, but threw it right to Defiance. And we're going to get a traveling violation on Braden Shaw. Play is so physical right now. You it know, is. it's a little fast right now. And I think, you know, they'll both settle down a little bit, you know. And I think the officials are doing a good job uh, keeping calling the fouls, keeping it a little tight. Yep, I think they are. Establishing you know, early on. Yep, and I think they see that quickness of the game, and that quickness of the game is leading to a little bit more lack of positioning on the defensive end. And we're going to get a foul, an offensive foul. That'll be on Seth Elkert. The 6'3 freshman will draw the whistle. You know, too, Chris, and a... In a world today where everybody likes to see the individual play, they love to see that one-on-one -on -one basketball, the beauty of what we see in Northwest Ohio and with these two teams tonight, you still see patterns. You know, it's not to the point where you take away their freedom, but, you know, they're good screens, good fundamental basketball. I love watching that. Yeah, when basketball is played well, it is a thing of beauty to watch, isn't it? And you're seeing this, and you know, too, you know, Everybody screams for that shot clock. And, you know, even as long as this took, there was no shot clock necessary here. Right. Saldana missed a shot. Rebound comes down to LB. 
437 and counting the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard says 4-3 in favor of the Bulldogs. They left Reed Thomas wide open there on the wing. He didn't tick it. And he will give back to Doolittle top of the key. Doolittle goes left side to Elkert. Elkert spins. Looking for that back door yep. on this weak side. Back out to Lincoln Garlock. That's coaching too. Caden yep. Zachary knew they were looking for that back And what door. a move by Kaysen Doolittle right through the middle of the key. Well, and that's, you know, beat, on, beat them on the perimeter and didn't get the help because they didn't want him to dish it off. They knew he would. Fiennes coming the other way with it. Jimenez launches a three ball, answers with the tray. 7-5 now, Defiance leads, back and forth game. Both teams play such great help side defense as well in their man-to-man. -man. Doolittle has the basketball working against Saldana. You're gonna get five second call. Yeah, dude. There you go, the turnover for the Eagles. Talked about pressure on the perimeter and that's exactly what created it. Got some subs coming into the game. Antonio Lopez will check in for the Bulldogs. And also Tyler Frederick. Kiesling comes back too. Lopez has the basketball. He'll feed to Zacharich. And the first option with the Bulldogs is always trying to get into Zacharich. He's such a good post player at 6'6". Three ball in the air for Defiance. No good. Got kind of into no man's land at Antonio Lopez. And a foul on the rebound. Well, you talked about such a great post player by um, Caden Zacharich. But, you know, a lot of people, I mean, his dad was, I mean, I... Sure, our viewers probably know it, but Dad was such a great player at Ayersville. Mom still is leading scorer of all time at Archbold. Wow. And he played at Defiance College, didn't yep. he? After that. So we're going to get a foul on Defiance. Let's see who they call it on. They called that on Tyler Frederick, and I think that's going to be his second quick one. Yes, it is. And that's four fouls already on the Bulldogs. Yep, he came in there and. Got into South, Seth Eichert. So inbounding will be Lincoln Garlock here on the sideline. They go backcourt. Aiden Kiesling with some tight defense on Doolittle. Conaway has it now, comes through the key, dishes off and intercepted by Braden Shaw. Bulldogs are running the other way, down and layup, and it's too hard. Putback is too hard, and the rebound comes down to Jake Gherkin for the Eagles. I think he thought he was under pressure so much. And and a block foul called on Lopez. You know, going back to that, and even though it was a, a missed layup, but boy, what an incredible pass, you know, by Braden Shaw. And just to have that court vision to see yes. what was down there ahead of him. That's a long bounce pass. Long bounce pass really, really takes incredible vision, incredible skill. And I feel like the bounce pass has kind of come out of favor of a little bit in basketball. Yes, I would agree with that. And, that's, and I think that's too because of all the one-on-one -on -one basketball that's being played. Kaysen Doolittle shoots 78% from the line. He missed his first one. The Finley Truck and RV scoreboard has 7-5 in favor of Defiance. Make it 7-6. Finley Truck and RV is your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Defiance going the other way with the one-point lead underneath. Shot up and good by Kiesling. And I don't know how Kiesling escaped, but he did. Well, that's coming off a screen on that backside. And, uh, again, that's what pattern offense does. Frees you up. Good screens, good fundamental screening. You can see that on the Charles River uh, replay. It was pretty, pretty nice screen right there, as Jerry said. And then Carson Conaway with a little tip with the right hand. He, again, I mentioned about his shot blocking capability, but he has just such good timing, good, good jumping ability. Underneath to Zacharich is double teamed, and now he's going to be whistled, I think, for the traveling violation. He was. Too many steps. Got to talk to Kirk Lehman a little bit before the game, and, uh, you know, he's, Kirk's crazy still going on down there, and... Uh, just a, just a great coach, great historical coach for Defiance, and now a family tree with his son Bryn taking over. You know, I'll say this, and if I don't get it all in, I want to come back to it, but, you know, one of the things that Bryn was doing, a lot of people know where Bronson Park is in Defiance, and yep. 
you know, that's in the old days, and I say old days, in the 70s and 80s, that's where we played. That's where our kids played at. And he still takes his players out there. Wow. Wow. As a three ball for Jake Gerken. But he still takes his players out there in the summer as part of his camp for the historical aspect of it and appreciate the background of everything. But when you have a team or teams that are so historical in nature, like just traditional powerhouses, to have the ability to kind of keep that going, you know, keep that tradition going, it's really neat. It is, and you know, I think, you know, you hear the term and we're gonna see this reach from behind. And, you know, you wonder, but that's almost always called. Yep. But, you, you know, you're right about that, but that, that to me is what, we, we overuse it sometimes, but it takes a village. It takes a community to make teams win. Getting that respect of that community and appreciating the past is all part of making programs strong. Three ball in the air is no good. And we're going to get a, uh, what's the, what was the Hit issue? the top of the thing. Oh, hit yep. the top of the thing. There you go. Uh, Keith, by the way, Kiesling and Frederick each with two fouls for defiance. Like, I keep an eye on them. Reed Thomas will check into the game for the Bulldogs. Or the, the Eagles, excuse me. The Finley Truck and RV scoreboard has Liberty Benton now on top, 11-9. And I think we're going to see that back and forth yep. quite a bit. Lots of lead changes going to be happening. Zacherich with it, working against Carson Conaway. It gets knocked out of bounds, and it will be off the Eagles, so Defiance will inbound. They're going to do it on the sideline here. Boy, Zacherich on that inside, though, you know, Again, he dished it off there, but boy, he's such a such a threat. They go baseline, and Khalil Legalon tried to get it to Zacherich. It just went right off his hand, so they're going to say that Zacherich hit it last. So the Eagles will bring it up. And it doesn't matter what those doesn't matter what those other officials think. They're letting that guy that was close make the call. Absolutely, and as it should be. Yep. Right side. For Garlock, Lincoln will pass over to Reed Thomas. Thomas will call his troops and tell him which way he wants to go with him. They're trying to, I think they're going to wait for the last one unless a layup shows up. Doolittle with the basketball now will bounce up between the circles. And then he'll go to Conaway. Conaway working against Schlotter. Conaway spin moves, puts up a, a tough shot, no good rebound comes and gets knocked out of bounds off of Liberty Benton. So Defiance will have four seconds. Let's see if we have a super long pass and a layup here. What happens? Saw that in the girls game, Brian and Liberty Benton early. And a long shot is off glass. So at the end of the first quarter of play, the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard has Liberty Benton 11, Defiance 9, back after this. Back out on WOSN, Chris Malenga and Jerry Snodgrass, 11-2, your score. Our instant replays tonight being made possible by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. And love those replays, able to see all the action up nice and tight. And I'll be the first to say that our production crew is incredible. They really are. I've worked two games with them today, and yes. they've done a great job. You feed them a little bit of a Texas Roadhouse, and they, they go for you for the second game. Well, I sure hope you bought. <laughs> Quickly underneath to Zacharidge, missed the shot, got the second one. I'll tell you what, the thing that impressed me there was how quickly Carson Conaway caught it, it was. got down there. Yep, in fact, I'm sure it, it surprised Zacharidge a little bit too because he had the shot initially and thought he was right there and he, he was right on him right away. Three ball in the air, misses, rebound out of bounds and it'll be off of Liberty Benton. So it was Garlock that took the shot. He's made a couple of those and just that one didn't get anything. So the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard has it all tied up at 11, and we this is the game, kind of game we expected, yeah. back and forth, tied up a lot. And that relatively low scoring is not because of poor offense. It's just because of great defense. Great defense. Liberty Benton comes out in a 2-2-1 press. Defiance looks to break it. They've got it top of the key. David Jimenez will drive in. Shot is missed. Jimenez hits the deck, not because of any foul, but because of how hard he was coming. Well, and that, and you know, the reason for the miss is I, I, I do think, I couldn't tell for sure, but I think Conaway had got a little piece of that. Spin move, shot the other way. That's not going to fall. Carson Doolittle, but we are going to get a foul whistled. 
And that'll be, I think that's going to be on Frederick again. That'll be three if that's him. It is Tyler Frederick. You know, this is only his second game back after an ankle injury. He missed five games. You know, he's their second leading rebounder. Started last year and came back, you know, from his injury as a sixth man. So, you know, he's just really kind of working his way back in from an injury. Jason Doolittle made the first of two. He's a 78% foul shooter. Gives Liberty Benton a 12-11 lead. Next one is up and off front iron. Rebound comes down to Schlotter for Defiance. Bulldogs will go the other way. Liberty Benton gets back into that. Well, there, it looks like they're still in a 2-3 zone. Now they get into man-to-man. -man. That's the thing with such good help side defense. It so often looks like a zone. Great Zach ball movement right now by Defiance. Zacharich was at the top of the key. Got it to Braden Shaw. Shaw will dish off. And then the Bulldogs will lose the basketball. And they get it back. I don't know how, but they got it to Caden Zacharich up and in. Yeah, that's one of those unfortunate things. And when you're Liberty Benton on that, you, you just do nothing but clap because you were hustling all the time. It's just a freak thing that happened, and the guys open underneath. LB will bring it up. Garlock, Cameron Garlock will feed it underneath. Then right back out to him. He'll launch a three. No good. Rebound comes down to the Eagles. That was Doolittle that got in there to get that one. He's everywhere on the he court. He is everywhere. Offers so much to them. Only 6'3", but gets his hands on everything. Has a good sense for the ball. 5.50 and counting. The Finley Truck and RV scoreboard has defiance on top by one. We're going to get a 30-second timeout. So we're going to take it with them. Our scoreboard today being provided by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. The Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows 13-12 in favor of defiance. Back after this on WOSN. Back out on WOSN, Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass, 13-12. Uh, defiance in favor here on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. And I'll tell you what, we talked about this in pregame. Back and forth, back and forth. It's going to be a tight game. And Nobody's blowing each other out. Exactly, and also very physical. We're seeing that by, you know, seven fouls right now by uh, on Defiance. But, you know, the great thing, too, oh, good steal. What a steal. Steal away by Braden Shaw. He will draw the foul. Both the guys will run into the... The uh, padding on the far side there, they shake hands and all is well. Hey, I will tell you, Lincoln Garlock is the one that, you know, fouled on that, you know, hustled back so much. And, you know, his dad would be embarrassed, but I coached his dad, and he plays just like his dad. <laughs> just aggressive, hard, and also a great kid. Seemed healthy right away, you know, went to Braden Shaw and just said, hey, you, you know, just, just part of the game. Yep, it is. Shaw makes the first one. Got to know Scott just a little bit tonight. Uh, he was helping us out, getting his head for our first game tonight, and got told by Nate Irwin that he kind of takes over for the boys so Scott can watch his two kids play. Yep. You know, and it's I, I never miss a chance to say something about the athletic directors because of, they've been here since this morning. They have. And a total of five basketball games today. And I can assure you it's not just watching games. No, you know, it's not. With all the, they have to deal with us. <laughs> you know, let alone every, everything else. Three ball in the air for Defiance. No good by Lopez. Rebound will come down. Kaysen Doolittle. Great rebound by Doolittle that time. Just had good position. And for a 6'3 kid, he can really handle the basketball as well. He's got good hands. And that's what that's what they really have. As You know, even there, you look at that shot right there taken by Carson Conaway. 6'5", you know, still able to shoot from three. Schlotter has it. He'll go baseline, put up a shot. And that was a good no call. Yep, good no call. Just going to say the same thing. And it wasn't a fake. He had his feet planted, but at the same time, you know, he just it shouldn't have been a foul and wasn't. Not, not contact there. Oh, cross quarter. Defiance fans wanted to travel, didn't get one. They got a missed shot, though, and Braden Shaw grabs the rebound. Shaw at 6-1 has hops, too. Now he'll go the rest of the way, put up a shot. They're going to get an offensive foul right there. And I'll tell you what, that, that was a great job of Liberty Benton because Braden Shaw, you know, we'll see this, kind of went over to his left a little bit more, and boy, that uh, defender just stayed planted. Takes uh, a lot of guts to take a charge coming does. from somebody like Braden Shaw. So Garlock gets the inbound, then goes right back to Conaway. Well, all of us hate to see those flops and those fakes, you know, and that's being called less and less, and it's being taught less and less. But when you've got one like that, that's really a gutsy defensive play. 
Elkert with it. He's calling out his troops to set them up. And they wanted a five-second call, didn't get it, but stolen away by Braden Shaw. Shaw will put it up, no good. Rebound tipped around, and it will go, let's see. Twice they tried to throw it off a defiance player. This time, Zachridge picks it up and draws the foul. And he, the way he reacted after that whistle, I think he thought something was coming towards him. I do, yeah. <laughs> but well, I'll tell you what. We have, some, we have some players on the court. I will tell you that. We have some great, great high school players. So the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows Defiance 16, Liberty Benton 12. Zacherich has a chance to add two to that. He makes the first. He's a 76% free throw shooter, averaging 19 a game. He's got five right now. Well, I'll say this. Coaches, kids, I may speak out of turn, but coaches, kids, they're good free throw shooters. Next they one. just are. They just know the importance of developing that in your game at an early age. Now Defiance with the full court pressure. Doolittle looks to break it, then he'll find a relief in Conaway. Conaway will bounce pass it over the timeline to Garlock. Now Conaway has it back. Conaway looks to go through the key. Bumps, shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Zacherich. Outlet to Lopez. And I thought they were at Defiance was going to be running a little bit, but Lopez slowed it up. Lopez was looking. There was no question. He was looking. I forget who it was. In the, I think it was... Uh, yeah, I think it was Kiesling over in the right corner there was open, but... Just not enough for a long pass. Shaw double team now. They get it over to Lopez. Lopez will go around the screen and then gish back out. Kiesling thought about a three. Now he'll come inside, kick it out to Zacherich. Three ball in the air Ooh. and rattles it home. Yes, it does. When you got a guy like Caden Zacherich that can make shots underneath, good post player, and then he can also shoot the three, that's a problem for a lot of teams. Yes, it is. And it's a very good timeout by Liberty Benton. You know, to take that, just to stop the bleeding a little bit. You know, nothing changed. Just settle down a little bit and whittle it back. All right, 21-12 on the Finley Trek and RV scoreboard. And let's take this time to reset ourselves and talk about what we've seen so far here in this first half of basketball. Well, the, the foul situation is a little, you know, nervous for defiance right now, especially out of the guard position. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I think play has slowed down just a little bit, you know, to, to where it's not – so many fouls it's not so much out i would say out of control but you know every time they've realized every time they drive somebody's there to pick them up absolutely and just good help side defense from both te both teams tonight yeah the other thing that you know penetration from the perimeter causes so many problems in rebounding you know because you're forcing people to help out all of a sudden they're not there to check out their man all right so 21 12 defiance has opened up a Nine-point lead, if my math is correct, with 3.19 remaining here in second quarter. And this is a good time, too, after one team takes a timeout. You might see something a little different maybe out of uh, defiance because they were able to take advantage of that timeout, too. So Doolittle brings it over the timeline. Seems like things have slowed down just a little bit. Doolittle will go left side, double team there. Now back to Doolittle. He's buried deep in that corner. He's going to go baseline, put it up off high glass, and good. Doolittle, good play right there. Good, strong six. play. Zacherich will launch another three. That one goes off of nothing. I don't know that it hit rim, but Doolittle will come down with the rebound. Go right past Zacherich, up for the layup, and wow, quickly four points out of that timeout. So how good does that timeout look now? Exactly, and I think that's one of the things he did was instill confidence in them. It's okay. It's okay. You can see in that Charles River replay, he just blew right past Zacherich, not hesitating at all. Defiance with Schlotter puts up a jumper. It rattles, no good. Rebound comes down to Conaway. Ten uh, footer there didn't go. That's what timeouts do. Yep. You know, they just stop the bleeding a little bit, give some confidence, and the whole momentum shifted right after that timeout. And he drew a foul, and that is going to be, that'll be on Kiesling. That'll be three on Kiesling again. So two guys with three in Kiesling and Frederick. You know, one of the things, and they're going to miss Adam Kiesling, or AD, Aiden Keasley, I'm sorry. Um, he's been such a surprise for them this year. He's become a lockdown defensive player, and that's a big surprise headed into the season. Not a big score, just at 2.3 points per game, but as you said, it was his defense that uh, is really good for the Bulldogs. Doolittle makes the front end of the one and one as Defiance now has nine team fouls. So the next one, they'll be shooting two. Liberty Benton clawing their way back here. Defiance had opened up a nine point lead. And it is back to three. So that timeout was great. 
All right, Bulldogs will bring it up. Left side to Jimenez. Then they'll give back to Schlatter. Schlatter will go right side back to Jimenez. Jimenez works around the screen. Baseline, then he finds Saldana. Then Zacharage at the foul line. He puts up the 15-footer. And now Defiance wants a timeout. It'll just be a quick one. What do you think? Uh, Coach Lehman wants to say in that timeout. Well, I think for one, I think he sees something that they can take advantage of. And I think the main part of that, he's just going to emphasize, if you saw in that last possession, they were face guarding uh, Braden Shaw. And so they're not even letting him touch the ball. Well, on the other hand, that's opening up Zacharich, you know, at the free throw line or somebody at the free throw line. And I think he's just reminding them of that, that that's, you know, they're going to take away Braden, so here's what we're going to do. And what's great when you're Coach Layman, you got some guys on the bench, some coaches on the bench that are seeing those things, being able to relay it so you can give it to the kids. There are not only some good coaches on the bench, but as we all know, there are a lot of them in the stands too. Tonight. Absolutely. But, you know, in, in all reality, though, I will say this. It was great running into Kirk Layman, uh, of course, Bryn's dad, but, you know, former coach, very successful coach that really turned around a lot of things at Defiance. And also, Tom Rex is here tonight. Uh, coach from years back that played there in the uh, uh, mid-70s. And Denny Shannon, a great player from about 75, 76, 77, is here tonight too. And it's great to see them, former players supporting. All right, LB has it going the other way. Lincoln Garlock has it now. Underneath to Conaway. And Defiance has picked up the defensive pressure. That's knocked away. And they're going to get a foul on Jimenez. He disagrees. I also got a chance to talk to Defiance Athletic Director Jerry Beauty down there. and I, I tell you what, I love Jerry. Jerry knows so much about the Defiance community, so much about this school. He's a legend, football coach. Yeah, there has been the football coach, athletic director, just a great guy. I'm so proud of him. He was at, he was at Finley, and I worked under Jerry. And uh, I remember talking to him about the opportunity. He'd come from Van Wert and went to Finley. He was football coach and athletic director. I remember talking to him. He goes, what do you think about Defiance? And I told him, Jerry, if there is one person that can really turn around Defiance football, which they needed at the time, and no disrespect to anybody else, I said, it's you. And by golly, did they. I, I have all the respect in the world for Jerry. Just a great guy. Free throw is missed, but I'll be able to maintain the possession. Here the Eagles have Carson Doolittle. He'll go baseline, put up a shot over Zacharj and no call. He gets his own rebound up. That time he does get a call. I misspoke that was Schlotter that had that first one. And we're also in the double bonus right now too. Absolutely. Only a minute 20 left in the half, but still in the double bonus. So that'll put Doolittle to the line. Doolittle has 11 already tonight. He's averaging 15. Make that 12. No better way than getting them and getting them, getting them back at the free throw line. So the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows a three-point lead for Defiance with one foul shot coming. Make it two. Defiance has a minute 20 here in the half. They cling to a two-point lead. It's been back and forth, tied a couple of times. Each team has had the lead. Shaw with the basketball, who goes sideline. Now go by himself. Nice little dish to Zacharich. Got it, and the contact. And I'll tell you what, I don't know where, if you watch this replay, look at Zacharich. He's right under there, and nope, everybody forgot about him. Yes, and you know what? Obviously, we can see that that all starts with Braden Shaw's penetration, but boy, that's what good guard play, good penetration, heads up. You know, very, very difficult to take an offensive charge or take a charge on him. So, boy, they're... So creative. Zacharich will make the free throw, so that extends out the Defiance lead to five. Hope you're enjoying this one on WOSN. Chris Malang and Jerry Snodgrass having a whole lot of fun watching this one. And I'm the first to be able to say this, I think, but having Coach Braden Shaw's dad, uh, Dr. John, he plays just like him. <laughs> Shot is missed by Doolittle. You don't see a miss like that from him very often. Defiance will come the other way. Jimenez with it. We'll give over to Saldana, top of the key. Now they'll hand off. Shaw comes through the key, stops at the foul line, extended, no good. Rebound will come down to Garlock, and LB is running 30 seconds to play in the first half. And that was a good shot attempt by Braden Shaw that time. Good stop on that. Had a good open shot. Just, just didn't fall. Conaway will hand off to Doolittle. Doolittle off to Garlock. What you don't want, you don't want to foul right now. 
Conaway looks to drive, slides down. They wanted to charge, didn't get it. Now back out, two seconds, and they need to get a shot off, and they don't get a shot off. So the end of the first half of play, the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard says 26-21 in favor of Defiance. Our scoreboard being provided by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Going to take this time out, come back with our halftime show after this on WOSN. Back out at WOSN here at Liberty Benton. Halftime 26-21, Liberty Benton. Instant replays tonight being made possible by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass. And let's take a look at some stats here. I'm going to have to do some quick math as we do this. Let's look for uh, first Liberty Benton. Conaway has two points. Gherkin has three, Garlock has three, and then Doolittle has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. So he leads all scores for Liberty Benton, uh, and uh, they are trailing on the scoreboard 26 21. Taking a look at the Defiance Bulldogs uh, Shaw has three, Keesling has two, Jimenez has two, Schlatter has two, and Zacharich has two, four, six, eight, 10. 11, uh, 14. So he has 14 of their uh, 26 points. And, uh, you know, he's, he's kind of their leading scorer at all. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, if you're not watching this game and somebody's seeing statistics like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong with Braden Shaw or something like that? No, 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 no. It's, I mean, they're ahead. They're taking what's given to them. You know, the, I think the neat part about this, too, if you're a coach in this, I'm looking at it from the coach standpoint. If you're in that locker room at halftime, Neither team, neither coach, is screaming and yelling and you need to do this or anything. No, no, no. If you're Liberty Benton, you're saying, hey, listen, we're right there. We're right there. If you're Defiance, you're saying, hey, listen, we've weathered the physical play. What a great stop at the end of the half. They didn't get a shot off. We're in good shape, and we've got our best basketball ahead of us. So these are fun games if you're a coach. All right, so I'm going to ask you about some halftime adjustments both teams might make. Our halftime adjustments being presented by the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled, objective, and caring financial planners. Let's start with LB, who's down five at the half. What adjustments are you making here uh, for Liberty Benton? I think, for one, you're going to make them a lot on the offensive end simply by saying, hey, we're going to probably continue to spread it a little bit and take advantage of going to the hole. It's going to get them in foul trouble. It's going to get the Bulldogs in foul trouble. Two, it's going to get us in better rebounding position if we do miss. But three, it's going to get us to the foul line you know, and, and good opportunities to score. All right, so if you're Defiance, if you're Bryn Lehman in the half in the locker room, what did he say to his guys? I, I think it'll be interesting because I think he's probably spent a lot of time talking about how they need to adjust that they're completely taking the offensive end away from Braden Shaw. They're face guarding him, not letting him touch the ball. Now, when he brings it up the court, that's a whole different story. Usually, you're bringing it up the court after the other team scores, so you don't want that. So I think they're spending a lot of time they spent a lot of time adjusting to what we need to do offensively if they continue to take it away from him. All right, halftime adjustments being presented by the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Going to take a timeout on WOSN back after this. Back out of Liberty Benton here on WOSN scoreboard today being provided by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Well, the Finley RV scoreboard shows 26-21 in favor of the Defiance Bulldogs. You've got Chris Malega and Jerry Snodgrass here on WOSN. And Jerry, love calling games with you. You're so knowledgeable. And then just the ties you have to both these communities, you make you the perfect guy to do color today. The compliment, I appreciate the compliment on that, but, you know, at the same time, I mean, I, I, I probably owe all these people money is what I'm more <laughs> feared of. I said that earlier, but, uh, but I tell you what, it's a blessing to be able to cover this, knowing their families, knowing their communities. All right, so LB will get it to start here. Doolittle will go right away down low, loses the basketball, picked up by Antonio Lopez. See how quick the hands were on that? Yep. That's a difficult thing. Shaw has it now. Shaw will go right side to Lopez. Now Lopez top of the key underneath to Zacharich. Up and good. Wow. Caden Zacharich right block. I will tell you what. You know, on paper, that looked so good because they were running Braden Shaw all the way through. And everybody knew they were going at him. No. They slipped uh, Zacharich off that screen. 
and got it into him. And he's 6'6". Six, six. How do you miss the guy? But right. they left him open on the right block. And that's an adjustment that they made at halftime, knowing that they're helping off those screens so much. Reed Thomas has the basketball top of the key for LB. They feed underneath, knocked away by Schlotter. Schlotter's going to take it one on two. Puts up the shot. Good. They're going to call block. So Shaw will get the bucket. Watch this one coming right at you on our floor camera. And a good call on this, too, because he didn't have time to get his feet set. But you know what? I still think this little flurry is from that last stop at halftime. That's such a confidence builder. That's like in football, you know, where you make a key stop at the end of the half get the ball back the second half. Well, that puts Schlatter on the line. He's 69% for the line. He makes it there and quickly goes to guard the inbound pass. Yeah, they come out right in the press at the end of free throws. And he stole it, stole it away again and up and good. So, so Schlatter now. His hands, his quickness is unbelievable. They get it down and... Reed Thomas has to wait for the rest of the Liberty Benton team to get down there and catch up to him. Isaac Schlotter has been such a key early on, opening up a 12-point lead. He's averaging 6.9. He's got nine right now. Up and over the defense is Carson Conaway. Conaway now with four. Boy, that, what a good, strong move that was. Bulldogs coming the other way. Three ball in the air, no good. That was Braden Shaw. Rebound will come down to Lincoln Garlock. Garlock will give to Carson Conaway to cross the timeline. And I'll tell you, you know, a missed shot, that's, that's not Braden Shaw. That's great defense by Liberty Benton. It's just pressuring him to no end. Do a little had it out the, the volleyball line. They'll give to Conaway now. Conaway looks to drive. They'll hand back to Doolittle. He'll come inside, make a spin move. Got right behind the defense. Missed the shot, though. But he went right behind the defense all by himself. Great move, great leg work. Jimenez with the basketball. That'll be in the man-to-man. -man. Underneath to Zacharich, then they find Lopez. It's blocked away. You yeah. talked about yeah. Carson Conaway. Right there, leading, leading shot blocker in the BVC. But when you watch this, just look at him get off his feet. And it's such an art because he does it without body contact. And nice little, just little fingertip tip, knocked it right out. And a great coverage of the replay on that. Antonio Lopez thought about a big three, did not take it. Rebound, or shot is missed there. Rebound by Zacharich, he puts it up and in. Zacharich is just really strong. Look how much distance he covered on this. Watch this. And never traveled. All by keeping the ball up in the air. He's good. I love watching him. 35-23 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Nice spin move there, and they'll dish off right side. Three ball in the air, no good. And that was Cameron Garlock that missed that one. I think we'll probably see, especially if there's a score here, we're going to see a timeout, I think, by Liberty. But sometimes, to be honest with you, a substitution like that, honestly takes just a little bit of that momentum away. I know people might find that hard to believe, but it just it just does. It stops it for it a does. minute. It stops yeah. the game for a minute, gets everybody a chance to catch their breath. Zacharich, ooh. And I'll tell you what, that is going to be a foul on Lincoln Garlock, but that was nothing more than hustle right there. Diving for the loose ball. And both players showed it. Yep. So Shaw will inbound here on the near sideline to Antonio Lopez, playing a little bit of extended minutes with fouls on Kiesling and Frederick. They feed underneath to Zacharich. He'll turn, put up a shot, and make that one. Zacharich is dangerous close to the basket. Yeah, and you know what happens? As soon as you really start focusing on taking him away, you've got somebody yep, on the And here comes Braden Shaw <laughs> after that. Defiance steals it away. Saldana will pick the pocket of Doolittle. He'll bring it up, give it to Braden Shaw. Shaw will go baseline, gets double team, yep. and he will travel on the baseline. And it'll be a turnover for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he was caught between taking that himself and dishing it off. So Garlock will come in. Cameron Garlock will come in. Doolittle will get a well-deserved break. Cameron Garlock had a great senior year as a quarterback for the Eagles. Does a great job quarterbacking this basketball team. Quickly to Lincoln Garlock. Three ball on the air side. Jake Gherkin hits it. 
He's 31% from three, and that is a big one right there. Defiance's his lead is cut to 11 with 348 remaining third quarter. Only a sophomore getting a lot of playing time and a good three-point shooter. Has a great family history of basketball. Antonio Lopez will dribble drive. Look for some help. He gets it out to Khalil Ligon. And we're going to get a timeout from Coach Bryn Lehman. I think they're just to settle the guys down. It's going to be a full timeout, though, so we're going to take it with them. Scoreboard tonight being provided by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Going to take a timeout, come back with more after this on WOSN. Back out on WOSN Instant Replays tonight being made possible by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Your Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows the Defiance Bulldogs on top of the Liberty Benton Eagles, 37 to 26, 330 remaining here third quarter and I want you to be thinking about who's doing the hustling down there because we've got the Stoli Insurance Hustle Award happening after the game so put your thinking cap on for that one Jerry. Do we have 11 or 12 of them? <laughs> Jerry Snodgrass, Chris Malenga here with you on WOSN. Three ball on the air for Lagan and it is good and it's 40 to 26 now. The lead is wide open at 14. How about that? You know earlier in the year Lignon was uh, splitting time with the JV and varsity. Come January, he's all varsity, but he is really, really coming on for the Bulldogs. Defiance defense is really clamped down on this end now. Liberty Benton having a hard time getting it anywhere inside the three-point arc. So a three ball in the air is no good for Conaway. Rebound will come down to Saldana. And that's really all they're giving them right now. The middle of that key has been packed with blue shirts. Shaw comes inside, gives off through, uh, at the line. Shot is missed by Lagan, and that'll put him to the line to shoot two. Gherkin will pick up the second foul, only the third team foul for LB. But how about that? Coming into the game as a sophomore, and, you know, takes a tough shot there, but gets fouled, has a chance to put two on the board. First one is up and good. He is a 50% free throw shooter. And you can kind of tell it. He doesn't have a whole lot of spin on the shot right there. Got it in, but uh, if you watch this, the rotation off the ball, but he's only a sophomore. You'll be able to see it right here as we got the baseline camera. Tristan down there getting some good shots right down there. Next one is good as well. So he is perfect that time and makes it 42 to 26. That's what confidence does though too. Are you surprised at all about this big defiance run? This game was no, early I'm not. on back I, I'm and I'm really not. I just, I, I think right now their defensive pressure is making all the, see right there, they're just making all the difference in the world. And you notice, you see the hands on the ball, and they've done it for the most part, I'm going to be careful when I say this, without fouling. <laughs> Didn't want to do the announcer jinx. Talked about foul trouble in the first half, and there have been no fouls until that. Until that one. <laughs> that one's going to be Lagan. He'll be pick up his first foul. But still, that is the first, first team foul of this half for the Bulldogs. And the PA announcer is saying Ligon, so I'm going to say that too. 23-22, I assume he did some homework there. I think it is Ligon. Yeah, you're right. I, I was pronouncing it wrong, and I apologize to our viewers and his family. Underneath, shot is missed by Reed Thomas, and Defiance gets a rebound. The other thing that we're seeing down here is one and done for LB. If they do get a shot off, Defiance is getting really good on the defensive glass, which was the key to the game. Yes, definitely. Three ball the other way, buried it. That's David Jimenez. And there's going to be a timeout called by Coach Doug Whiteman. And now it's 45 to 26. And you can hear the Defiance faithful over here on our side. You can really see that they are just really, really into this game right here. Well, not only really into it, but how about the support? You know, on the road, you know, 45 minutes away. And, you know, it, again, that's nothing new. Defiance has always followed their teams. I will say this about Defiance, too, because Liberty Benton has its own great, great history. You talked about Jerry Beauty earlier. Yep. Of course, you know, when Jerry went to uh, Defiance, he got a state football championship. But he brings more than just that football state championship. The guy has a championship attitude. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the expectation and the support of their coaches, I, I just, I don't know how to really describe that. But there are just some leaders that have a championship attitude. And, and that's Jerry Beauty. Absolutely, and just a, you know, a history of, 
of uh, good performances at Defiance, a state championship in basketball a few years ago. Uh, you got to hand them the trophy for that. Uh, you know, and then also, you know, football you mentioned. Uh, baseball has had some a lot of success. Yes. So, you know, it's just a, just a good school, a good culture of winning at Defiance. And while we're in this time out here ending it, but Liberty Benton has that same thing. Their school building a brand new elementary middle school next to here. They have turfed their football field, built a beautiful indoor facility, uh, multi-purpose facility, and it's, it's a growing, growing community with a lot of leadership and support. All right, Liberty Benton has it. Carson Doolittle will keep it. He'll look to go baseline. Nice spin move there. Shakes off a defender, puts up an easy layup. I tell you what, we were here, you know, for the girls' game this morning, the Bryan game, and just watching, looking around this gym and looking at the banners on the wall, you know, just kind of neat to see the history here at Liberty Benton. Two teams with just storied histories as the... Bulldogs make a shot by David Jimenez, and look at that, the hustle right back on defense. Boy, Jimenez, Schlatter, Braden, Shaw at the guard positions have done so much this game. And then you look at, you also look at Zachrich's scoring. Quick pop shot missed, in and out for Case and Doolittle, and the rebound will come down to Defiance. Liberty Benton can't buy a bucket lately. No, and you know, you took, you look at that rebound by uh, Ligon on that, that I mean, how key that is even. I mean, guy's a sophomore, but that's a key rebound. It really is. Jimenez with it, and the, the Bulldogs really in no hurry with 34 yeah. seconds to go here in the third quarter. They're just happy to play for a final shot. Very confident that they can get, you know, nurse a 19-point lead right now and try to get that up to 21 or 22. Now Schlotter will drive, then kick back out to Braden Shaw. You see Coach Lehman over there <laughs> trying to get the guys going as far as where they want to go. They get it to Shaw. Shaw will go baseline. Shot is blocked. Nice block there by Jake Gherkin. LB going the other way. And then a foul. And that is going to be on Jed, uh, Saldana. Team second, so no harm, no foul. All it did really is bring, nope, they're going to bring it back over the half-court yep. line. Thought they might have gotten away with getting it over there. Yep, nobody hurt on that. Not a bad foul at all. They get it underneath, stolen away. And here is Saldana. And there you go. The end of the third quarter of play. Defiance opens up a big lead, 47-28. Going to take this timeout back after this on WOSN. Entering the fourth quarter of play, Defiance opens up a 47-28 lead over the Liberty Benton Eagles here from the nest. Chris Malanga and Jerry Snodgrass here. Got a shot of the band right there. And uh, just a great atmosphere here. Great crowd. Uh, everybody came on out to support either the Eagles or the Bulldogs. Well, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, too, the crazies are out in full force. They I'm are. I'm just wondering now because when I started the Golden Megaphone across the state, they were the Kirk crazies. crazies. Are they the Brins crazies? I don't now know. I need to find out. We should ask them that question. Are they still Kirk's crazies? Tony, our producer, said. Saw a couple shirts in there. That is stolen away by Cam Garlock. Waits to find somebody trailing and then gives it back out to Conaway. Conaway will go left side to Lincoln Garlock, and it'll be knocked out of bounds off the fingertips of Saldana. Liberty Benton has its own strong student section, too. And there you have it. Yeah, you got a shot here on WSN go. of the crazies, and I love the wigs and the di different colored hair, and students really showing out tonight. The number of tips and stolen passes, I, 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 you know, I don't keep track of them, but my goodness, so many tonight. Their defense, Defiance's defense has just been incredible. They really have, and Bryn Lehman was just telling his team, let's get going, don't just pass it around, let's make some offense happen. They get a cross court, Zachridge, deep three, off glass, and no good, rebound tipped away. Look at the hustle on Lincoln Garlock to get that one up, shot is blocked, and it's gonna be a foul. Uh, number 11, Saldana. Here's the replay. Look at this. Saldana just up, hammers him. Yeah, it was going to be one of those. I'm not going to let him score. Yep. And he went for the ball. I mean, you know, yeah, everybody's yelling and everything, but, you know, he just went hard after the ball. Didn't do anything, you know, body-wise. Just went hard after the ball and got him on the arm. Garlock's a 75% free throw shooter. That one is off. 
Liberty Benton students have shown up in force today. Looking at them here on the shot. And lots of LB students, cheerleaders right there. And they always do. That's something that they've done so well. They've developed a great community uh, school pride here. That one is up and good. That makes it 47-29. They quickly get it down to Zacharich. Zacharich will spin, get double teamed, then he'll give back out to Jimenez. Jimenez back to Zacharich. Zacharich launches a three from the right side off iron. Rebound comes down to Kiesling. We haven't seen Kiesling much because he got into foul trouble early. Zacharich now will spin move, put up. Nope, they're gonna go Kiesling. Now they give it back out. Three ball, that is Jimenez. What a look there. It went, it went Zacharich, Kiesling, and then Jimenez. Wow, you talk about good teamwork. The Unselfish Charles, play. Charles River replay there showed that one really, really well. Doolittle the other way, looking for some help. He'll give over to Tom, Reed Thomas. Now back to Conaway. Conaway looks to drive, and he's going to draw the foul from Caden Zacharich. That is just his first foul. Zacharich with 20 points on the night. He's at his average. He averages 19. So one more than his average. And they've opened now a 21-point lead well, over you know, LB. And you know the other thing that Defiance is doing defensively, they're just forcing so many passes. Got a second one. <laughs> oh, wow. Another one on Zacharich on the floor this time. But you know what? Good players know how to play with two yep. fouls. I mean, you know, it's, not, it's, it's not only 6.15 left in the game. You got plenty. You got three more. <laughs> yeah. But Defiance has done such a good job of forcing extra passes, taking time off the clock. And although there's a lot of time left, it's just, you know, every minute in this counts. Yep, absolutely. When you're down that much. Conaway. Defense that Defiance is running than they did early on. Nice scoop and, uh, for Conaway. Are they going to get a foul? Nope, there was just a quick timeout after that. So nice one there by Conaway. And I don't know if we can grab that one on replay or not. But Conaway just came in with the, they scooped around a defender, put it up and in. Let's see if we've got the replay here coming. Yeah, he is. From Charles know, River. And again, all the Liberty Benton players are so good going to the glass. They're very versatile. They can shoot, they can drive, and that's what's made them so strong all year long. So 50 to 31. You know, 19 point lead. Defines still playing tough, still playing hard, and not, not cutting the throttle at all. No, they're not, but you know what? I'm standing here, and, and if I'm a Liberty, if I'm a Defiance fan, I don't look at this 19-point lead as still being, I know people say, Enough. there's only six minutes left, a little under six minutes, but I, I don't think it's safe yet. Yep. Coming up after the game, we'll have the Stoli Hustle Award, and you'll be thinking about that one. You get to go down and interview the winner. And <laughs> this is a smart move. That's right. Defiance is going to get the backcourt violation, and all they were trying to do is screen. After the violation was going to happen, all they had to do is screen over <laughs> so Liberty Benton didn't pick that one up. Well, you know what's interesting? Coming out of that timeout, we'll see if they do it again next time, but coming out of that timeout, which coaches do, Liberty Benton came out in a totally different defense, came out in a 1-3-1 zone, and I think it you know, surprised Liberty, or, uh, Defiance a little bit, and I think that's why the hesitation in that pass was not good. Garlock will go baseline, then dish. Three ball in the air, no good. Rebound will come down to the Bulldogs. That was Jake Gherkin that took that one. Shaw will drive it down quickly. Cross courts it over to Jimenez. Jimenez is on the left wing. Now Jimenez will go down in the corner. Gives it to Keesling. Keesling underneath, then out to Zacharich. Now back to Keesling. Smart by everybody on that. You know, they, they looked like they had a shot, but their bodies just weren't squared up. They were a little off balance and didn't take the shot, got it out and tried to get a better one. Now Liberty Benton trying to double team. They get it underneath to Keesling. Keesling will dribble back out. And Defiance doesn't need a shot, but they've got one there. Three ball, no good. And what a tip up by Aiden Keesling. Yeah, look, look at, at this. Him. He's smiling a little bit on that. <laughs> look at that. All he did was tip it up with yeah. his left hand on the Charles River replay. Three ball the other way is missed by Doolittle. Rebound will come down to Keesling. And we haven't seen Keesling too much. Here's the other angle of it. Keesling just tipped it right back up. And another shot there. You know, there's a good example, though, what I said earlier about Braden Shaw being able to control his body in there. You're not going to take a charge on that. And he knows when to dish it, knows when to shoot it. 
boy, you can you can just be so good with good guard play like that. Absolutely, missed shot by the Eagles, and Defiance will bring it down quickly underneath to Zacherich. Zacherich misses or makes a quick little shot up and good. They're going to have to, yep. And that'll be a timeout for Coach Whiteman. 56-31. Now this surprises me just a little bit that it's this big of a lead on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. You know, a 24 point or 25 point lead, and you know the Bulldogs sitting at number six and Liberty Benton sitting at number seven. We're going to take a real quick timeout. Back with more on WOSN. Back out on WOSN, the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows 56-31 in favor of Defiance. You know, season 18, a sports report continues Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10 on WTLW. I watched that last night to kind of see some of the LB guys in action. Uh, what a great, great show there on Channel 44 Friday nights. You know, it sure is. And the dedication to do so much for the, all the schools in Northwest Ohio, and that reach is pretty far now. And Hundred it's schools. Just, yes, it's just great to see. And for years, what WSN, WTLW have done for high school sports. So LB has the basketball. They trail by 25 underneath. And Zachary just holding his position. Get it to Conaway. Now it's to Doolittle. He misses the pass. Going the other way, we're going to see Keesling. Keesling will put up the easy layup. And just last year, this game was a 10-point game. And here it's a, let's see, 27-point game. Yeah, it, it's, you know, though, Liberty Benton is good. And please, you know, try to understand the fact, oh, yeah, how can they be when they're down this much? No, no, no. I, I think Defiance is playing one of their best defensive games and they're good all year long yes they are but they've just played tremendous defense and i don't think you can fault anything out of liberty benton for that zacharich is out now and i will see if he's going to play a return i don't think he will with 315 remaining as he's high-fiving the entire bench as he goes by so chance to get some younger guys in for the bulldogs here with 315 remaining bulldogs play in that tough wbl western buckeye league five and oh there so they're looking to contend for a wbl championship and a lot of credit to Liberty Benton, too, who has also played, you know, Wapakoneta, they played Kenton, they played Defiance out of the WBL, really, really trying to uh, ramp up their schedule. Braden Shaw. So Shaw makes the uh, bucket there. We've got a player for, is that Reed Thomas or is that Elker? He is limping off just a little bit. And I try, uh, Chris, I will tell you this as the play stopped for a minute. I try every single game to give credit to the athletic training staffs of these schools. Um, you know, when we saw what DeMar Hamlin went through and, yep. and the Bills and the NFL that drew worldwide attention to the need, and more importantly for the athletic trainers of these two schools, the burnout rate for athletic trainers in high school is incredible, and we need to do something about it. I mean, you look at the events they have to cover yep. and what they have to do, it's incredible. So both teams have some younger guys in. So this is Jackson Hostetler. And I'm going to have to pull out my roster here because we're deep into the roster for both teams. Defiance coming the other way. Schlatter. And now three ball in the air is no good. Rebound will come down. That is Irvin that puts that down. And Defiance is able to get two, three, four possessions. They missed the shot. They're able to get two and three and four down here. Irvin did a nice job on yep. that, you know, being able to control his body. I love the fact these guys are coming in and shooting the ball. And I'll tell you what, Irvin just got that basket, and boy, did he deserve it. Absolutely. Second Irvin, offensive rebound on that six, possession. 5 senior. You know, when you're a player at Defiance 6'5", you're a senior, and you're coming off the bench, you know, that's just the depth that this team has. Yep, and you know, that's the other thing about when you're a good team against a lot of opponents, you know, earlier in the year, those guys get playing time, and that is so valuable. And kids deserve it. Liberty Benton, I believe this is Miles Bailey looking down the JV roster to Elkert. They'll feed it underneath to Hostetler and lose the basketball and come the other way with the Bulldogs. And I'll guarantee you Liberty Benton will bounce back from this. They will bounce back very well. Up and good for Saldana. 
65-31 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. I still think this whole game goes back to that last stop of the first half. Yeah, I think you're right, Jerry. Because the defense just picked up the second half. Three ball in the air for LB is no good. That was uh, Elkert. Defiance will come the other way with it. Throw the score sheet out the window because I've got to get both rosters side by side now deep in this game. Underneath, no call there and now we're gonna get a foul. That'll be on 14. Which way though? Yeah, yeah coming the other way. Yep. Is Irizarry. So seventh team foul, which means Liberty Benton will be shooting here for the last 53 and a half seconds. This game will air at 10 o'clock at WSM. We also have got coming up uh, Defiance and OG. Is that correct there, Mr. Tony Producer? WSN that game, that'll be a good game. OG always tough out of the, you know, tough team for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I'm going to call in sick for all the announcers that are on that game so I can have it. So, <laughs> there you yeah, go. Yeah, you're right. What a, what a game that will be. So 43 seconds to go. Underneath, we're going to get a traveling violation. Don't forget we've got the Stoli Insurance Hustle Award coming up after the game. Hoping we're going to get a chance for you to go down and talk to them. You're certainly dressed for a TV appearance today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's good because if that's the case, I've always been told a face for radio. <laughs> they tell me that too. <laughs> <laughs> Hazard of our business. That's right. Waiting moments here. Defiance going to walk away with this one. 34-point lead and tipped away. And it's going to stay right here. Going to get some kids some uh, face time here. 21 is Caden Williams. He has the basketball right now. And the crazies over there are super excited about this one. Defiance just going to dribble this out. And that'll do it as the Bulldogs with a big win, 65-31 over the Liberty Benton Eagles. And the crowd goes wild, gonna take this time out and we'll come back with our post game after this on WOSN. All right, back on WOSN, Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass down with our Stoli Insurance Hustle Award winner, uh, Caden Zakrich, I'll send it down to Jerry. Thank you, Chris, I'm here with Caden Zakrich, you know, Caden, you know, you come in, you didn't play last night, had a game canceled, I'm sure that was a disappointment. You came in against a good team. What turned this around in the second half? Uh, I think we were a lot more aggressive and you know, not fouling was a, was a big one. We had a lot of stupid fouls in the first half. Um, but I think really like kind of getting gritty and you know, we wanted it more. And we had, you know, we started the quarter with some grit. You know, we had, you know, we had some huge plays. Isaac Slaughter, you know, like that comes to mind. We were, we were getting some momentum going. Steal and one. He had another steal and layup, you know, just kind of get things going. Um, so I just think we, we really kind of came out with more energy in the second half after coming out flat in the first half. You know, you, you have 20-plus points in the game. You're averaging right around 20 anyhow. But you're very unselfish. You know, not just you, but your team. And you feed off that defensive pressure. Talk a little bit about your guard play. Our guard play is unbelievable. Braden Shaw is one of the best guards in the entire state. Um, you know, and, and everyone around you know, smothering them on defense. Um, and, and I mean, th their coaches came in our locker room and said, you know, we're, we're the most unselfish team he's ever seen. You know, we move the ball better than any team that, that he's ever seen. You know, that's a huge compliment. And that's a big plus to hear an opposing coach say that. I think that's a big plus for your both of your programs. You know, Caden, having, having been a coach and a teacher in the Defiance District. You know, I have a lot of warm feelings about everybody in there and, you know, the traditions. Speak a little bit about how, what that tradition means to you. I mean, I, as a kid, uh, I, I, was in, I came to Defiance uh, in eighth grade, but I, mean, I, was at, I was a kid watching Defiance win a state championship in 2015 and, you know, many really good uh, uh, teams before that and Coach Lehman. Um, and, and, you know, we kind of continued uh, the same um, coaching down the line, you know, uh, Coach Lehman's son. Um, and I, I just, it's, it's respect for all the coaches here, and, and it's, um, it's, it's just, 
you just want to continue that the legacy kind of the people before us. Tradition, legacy, I'm going to put you on the spot because I know you did it at least a year ago. You still go to Bronson Park in the summer to play? <laughs> yeah, we did. Bronson Park. And you know, some of that literally is the respect for the tradition of the old school people that did that. Looking ahead real quick, and I know that you hardly ever do. It's one game at a time. You've got some big ones coming down the road. You know, tell me a little bit about what's, what's down the road and the remaining schedule. Um, uh, we have a really good, a, a bunch of really good teams left. Um, but our number one focus right now is winning the league. You know, so we, we have three league, uh, four league games left. You know, we want we want to take care of uh, the league. Our number one goes to win a league championship. Good. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to the Bulldogs. A big one against a good program and a good team tonight. And best of luck down the road. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, our Stoli Hustle Award winner is Caden Zachers of Defiance. Check out the WOSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner. We're going to see if we can get a quick interview with Defiance head coach Bryn Lehman, um, but we're going to take a quick timeout. We can do that here on WOSN. Back out on WOSN, 65-31. The Bulldogs defeat the Liberty Benton Eagles here, and I've got Jerry Snodgrass down on the court with coach Bryn Lehman. You know, it's such a thrill to be here with Bryn Lehman. I knew him when he was a little kid, and I know you hear that way too often, but, you know, having a connection to the Defiance program and seeing the tradition and everything else, coming into this game, you didn't play last night, coming into this game knowing that you're going against a solid program and a good team, tell me a little bit about going into the game. We, we knew it was going to be a battle, and, and it was a struggle early on. They're, they're tremendously coached, and they play really hard. They, they've got, you know, three seniors that start, that, that have entirely bought in, and, and um, they're very hard-nosed. They, they made buckets difficult in the first half. Uh, Braden had a hard time coming, and, and so did Caden. Uh, but we, we knew it was going to be a struggle, but I'm proud of how, how our guys came out in the second half, and we, we made some adjustments, and that's a credit to, you know, the bunch that we've got. I talked to Caden just a little bit ago, our Stock Insurance Hospital Award winner, mentioned to him about the unselfishness, and he proceeded to tell me, uh, uh, Liberty Benton's coaches came in and told you about what an unselfish team you are. Tell me a little bit about that. You know, that's the first thing we get from every opposing coach is, is how unselfish we are. And it makes things so easy when, when you can trust and rely on guys that, you know, they, they don't care about getting theirs. And we've got two guys that can really play. But it, it, they're incredibly unselfish. And it doesn't matter. That it's not just the senior group. It's the whole program. And, you know, that, it's a credit to what's been built long before me. Um, it, it's just, it's rubbed off, and, and I can't be prouder of how our guys, um, you know, treat each other. Well, you're a part of that tradition from being a young person, and I think that's, that's so critical, I think, in a lot of programs. Your guard play, especially defensively. I made a comment, you know, coming out in the second half. Stop at the end of the first, that defensive stop where they cut the shot off. I really thought that turned the corner. I know that's odd, but that turned the corner. Your defense. And a half. Yeah, and we, we had a ton of breakdowns in the first half, and it was frustrating because we knew the Doolittle kid could go right hard, and we knew, um, you know, the Conaway kid could go left, and we, we let them do that a little bit too much early on, and, and late a little bit, but we, we, you know, sat down and guarded them there that last possession. We just played our game. We kept them in front, and we really had them frustrated, and I think that carried over, and, and all of that momentum, um, you know, was huge for us in the second half. One game at a time, I know, but you got the WBL. You know, that's your goal to begin with. You know, that's your first goal. Tell me about this, the remaining games. You can't overlook anybody. We, we've been around this league too long. You, you've seen how much teams battle and how physical it can get. We're, we're going one game at a time. And, and I know there's one that people want us to circle and talk about, but we're, we're going one game at a time. We'll, we'll take whatever challenge comes our way, but I think we've got the crew to do it. And my last question, because I said something to Caden about this, and I said it on the air. You still go to Bronson Park in the summer? Oh, yeah. We're, we're at the park all summer long. You know, I talked about that, and I think that's sometimes for schools, they don't always realize how much it takes a community, but it's those kinds of things. When I heard you did that, I thought that is a fundamental part of why you have the support. Why are they still Kirk's crazies? Oh, yeah. Why they're still here. So best of luck to you down the road. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Coach. You betcha. And back to you, Chris. Jerry Snodgrass down on the floor with uh, both Coach and also uh, Caden Zakrich, who is our hustle player of the game. TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. I'm sorry, I was in Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com for the donations here. 
So for all of us, I want to thank our crew. Tony Malenga is our director, Cameron John Tripodi, and Tristan Atkinson. I want to thank Nate Irwin and Scott Garling and here at the uh, Liberty Benton Eagles for having us be here. And uh, for Jerry Snodgrass, one final time, I'm Chris Malenga. Your final score tonight here on WOSN, Defiance 65. And it was Liberty Benton 31 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, 65-31. Have a good night, everybody.